and we're live. So, hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Fellows in Arms. We're mm -hmm. already up at episode 6, which is kind of surprising myself. I don't think I've done this many of anything. But uh, here we are, uh, <laughs> and we have uh, three guests, which I'm like really excited about, because um, like, we have so much to talk about tonight, and I think everyone has a really good say in everything. Uh, so with me first is uh, Rich Mister, who is here next Hi. to me on the stream, uh, also Jorpen, uh, and uh, Diatonic. So maybe for those who don't know about you, we can just like kind of introduce you to the viewers at home. Uh, and Rich Mister, like, so <clears throat> what, what do you do concerning ARMS? Yeah, so I kind of run the um, a community site called um, the ARMS Punch Club. So it's kind of a community hub, uh, like a news site that um, really celebrates everything to do with ARMS. So we look at competitive play, we look at um, fan art, cosplay, we run a Discord that kind of trains players as well to get better. Uh, we look at different strategies and how to overcome certain types of arms and matchups. So that's the kind of community that we uh, run there as well. So it's a small, but it's growing every day. So it's a nice community. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the work that you do. Uh, and so Jorpen, you can go up next, maybe. Uh, hey, I'm Jorpen. I'm mostly involving arms. I just mostly play at the, com the competitive level. I'm not super good. <laughs> At least I think, but uh, I like to think I'm all right. Uh, other than that, I stream. I stream basically full time. It's my job. Uh, I stream. I did stream a lot of arms at one point. I'm kind of waiting for the next patch before I dive back into it because yeah. I need more ranks. Because oh gosh, I'm a goal oriented person. Yeah. Uh, other than that, yeah, just streaming video games and playing arms at a high level. I guess is what I do. Yeah. I think I think you're in a good company when it comes to uh, maybe not the top players in the world, but uh, I, at least I, <laughs> right. if I can speak for myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, go go ahead, you Diatonic. Uh, so I'm the tournament organizer over at Up in Arms, which started off as a monthly series, but now it's kind of like the Arms Tournament Network kind of thing, as I've been calling it. I don't <laughs> know the technical term for it, um, but yeah, I'm also kind of the okay at the game. But I like running events and I like to bring the community together. So. Yeah, I, I handle the putting them together, running them, and all the mod calls for the lag, <laughs> which I'm sure we'll get to later. But yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, that's great. Um, like, so we have a lot of topics to go through today. Obviously, like in the beginning of the week, I had a few topics in mind that uh, were interesting, and then a lot of things happened, and then more like another thing <laughs> was more interesting. <laughs> so we'll try to get through most of them. Uh, we might have less time for others, but we'll talk. Uh, we'll go through and talk about kind of rules uh, and guidelines and uh, that kind of will relate to an incident that happened earlier uh, about one or two weeks ago. Then we'll also go through and talk a bit about the lag issues that have been talked about at least uh, since yesterday. It was like a really big topic. Uh, after that we'll kind of just... Uh, I I'm, I'm actually really curious to hear you guys about like what your kind of goals are within ARMS yeah. and like what you want to do like going forward. Uh, and then in the end, we're going to talk a bit about EVO Japan and like kind of what it means for the community. And uh, then we're just going to top it off with shoutouts and stuff like that. So cool. um, beginning with the first topic, uh, which says uh, rules guidelines, which was kind of vague. But uh, basically what happened uh, for anyone who doesn't know was that there was an incident uh, about two weeks ago that concerned like um, racism to one of the players uh, in the arms community and we're not gonna like call anyone out here on the cast I just wanted to kind of bring this up as an opportunity to kind of <clears throat> talk about guidelines in uh, the communities and like rules that we can set up or should have or should not have because there has been um, like the arms community has been very slow uh, small sorry uh, and but it's been growing as of late and it's getting to the point where we might need some more kind of rules to kind of yeah. uh, withhold all of these uh, like these players and I was kind of wondering since uh, everyone here on the cast has their own channels uh, um, Rich Mister has the website and his community Diatonic has his uh, uh, tournaments and Jorpen you have your stream and channels and discords as well um, I think we all have our own discord actually um, mm -hmm. so like uh, I'm just kind of wondering like how how uh, how you guys view this kind of topic? I'm I'm not sure who wants to go first, but maybe like Jorpen could take a like how how does like do you have rules on like your channel or like how does that work for you? 
Oh yeah. Um. So, I'm pretty. I tend to be pretty lenient when it comes to like my rule sets when I manage anything. I basically, I abide by the rule of hey, just don't be jerks to each other, right? Yeah. Um, what happened from what everyone know is uh, going way beyond that. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty bad. That was that was just very overt racism, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I just want to say it's a product of growing pains for yeah. the game, right? You know, like mm-hmm. when when games are small and it kind of grows, it starts growing into of itself. There's not a lot of, as you've said, there's not a lot of framework, right? There's not a lot of baseline. People yeah. people kind of toy and try and figure out like, okay, what is and what isn't okay. And I think it's really good that we have like pretty much everyone took the steps needed to yeah. basically say like, hey, this isn't okay. We're not going to allow this because while they may have been joking, mm. that joke was in very, very poor taste. Yeah. yeah. Uh, w- one thing that I kind of reacted to mostly for uh, for everything, and that got me kind of the most upset about the entire incident, was that uh, everything took such a long time to get in place. Like a thing happened, people were just like, "No, this is a joke," and then I was like, "No, oh, okay, shit, I need to get on this." And I was just like typing a tweet and being like, "Okay, we're setting up rules for fel- fellows in arms, none of this shit," <laughs> yeah. and just like I needed to get that yeah. word out there first of all, um, because I felt like a lot of the uh, what was happening in that and to anyone asking in chat this is uh, separate from the lag incident that was happening yesterday mm-hmm. this was one or, one or two weeks ago uh, was that I think a lot of the people that are kind of running these things are kind of young I don't want to blame yeah. them but uh, I think a lot of the people that were just like no it's just a joke and then actually like there's like three like two or three hundred people in one of the discords where people can see all of these things and it's like yeah there's people that are like way older than teenagers so yeah i don't know that got me a bit um riled up uh, i don't know like uh, when how do you like how do you think about this entire thing like rich mister and uh, like how do you see like rules with uh, your website and things like that yeah um i've been around um like competitive fighting games for a long time yeah like way back um like street fighter cross tekken marvel versus capcom all that kind of stuff from way back when. So right from the get-go with um, the Arms Punch Club, yeah. we wanted to have very clear rules, um, like terms of conduct. So right from the get-go, we had a, a list of, of good conduct because mm. the thing with our community as well, yeah. it wasn't just around competitive play. It was around fan art, it was around cosplay, it was around news. Yeah. So we wanted to have um, some very clear guidelines. So no matter how old somebody was or how young they were, whether they were male or female, yeah. we'd feel comfortable as well. So we've actually been kind of not heavy handed, but we've been quite strict yeah. with what um, we allow to go on just so that everybody feels comfortable. Okay, but so like one thing that I had, uh, and we're going to get to you too, Diatonic, uh, is that like. Um, for me, when I set up, because uh, we set up some rules for the Fellows in Arms Discord, like uh, after this, we were like, okay, we need to get something going. And we kind of took our time to actually like write everything out correctly. So we took like a week for us, but um, was like, how do you kind of enforce <laughs> these rules? Because for me, and this is something that I'm curious about for all of you, like uh, enforcing rules, like if done not correctly you'll become the bad yeah. guy you'll just be like yeah. a party poop who's just like oh shit now you're coming here and <laughs> messing everything yeah. up um and uh, like i'm i'm curious to kind of hear that from each one of you before we like take diatonic's uh, perspective on things so like maybe jorp and for you uh, we can begin like the the like if someone is breaking uh, your stream rules like what goes down like do you have mods to take care of that or like what happens uh, it it really depends on what it is. If it's just something like, hey, someone's kind of being like a dick. Yeah. Usually I'll just be like, hey, stop. You know. <laughs> like, yeah. If they, it, that's like all. That's usually all it takes. Is you know, it's yeah. like, hey, man, like, come on. But if it really depends on like the severity, like if if something, you know, like if some, basically the rule I abide by is you can say whatever you want to me yeah. because I don't care. Yeah. Like I I'm really thick skin. Like people like assault me all the time. I'm just like that's pretty good. You're yeah. right. <laughs> uh, but like, as soon as they start insulting other people and making other people uncomfortable, that's when I take the issue and I'm like, you need to stop this right now. Uh, if you don't, then you're out. Basically, I'm I'm pretty hard line when it comes to rules. If they're yeah. just like, you know, if you can usually tell the difference between like someone who is like misguided, yeah, right, and they're just like, oh, I didn't understand, you know, the the correct social form for this yeah. thing, so I I just kind of made a mistake. And then the people who are like, no, I actually hate this. I want people to feel bad. 
And oh, yeah. once I make that distinction, I'm just like, okay, you're out. Or I, you know, warn them like, hey, man, come on, yeah. stop it. Uh, one thing that I've kind of noticed, uh, I have a, another friend called uh, Jellysar on Twitch who also streams a lot. Uh, and she gets, you know, a lot of shit. Uh, being a female on Twitch can't be oh, yeah. easy a lot of times. Yeah, it must but, be hard. Uh, and and uh, one, one thing that I uh, she told me basically was that when she actually gets these people that are just coming into the chat and being, like, rude to her, if she actually talks, like, directly at them, they kind of change really quickly because they, like... It's, like, really weird to have someone, like, look into the camera when you're watching a live stream, like, looking directly at you and being like, hey, you there. And they're just like, whoa, okay. And then, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. It's a good like, way to handle them, actually. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Then, like, have you had experiences like that, Jorpen? Like, where they're just like, oh, okay, shit, sorry. Or is this just, like, you ban yeah, them I've, and they... I've... I, I've had a couple. I've had a couple of experiences like that, and it's it's it goes along with like the distinction because the person who's coming in to like hurt people, like there, there's no helping them because no. they they have their goal and they're gonna do what they want to do. But then there's the person like you know who might just say something like they maybe don't realize they're hurtful. Like, yeah, I've had a I've had a lot of viewers who you know like whether it be through like medical disorders or whatnot, like they don't necessarily understand like you yeah. know how to act socially, right? Like a lot of I. I always imagine everyone on the internet is like just like the socially awkward kid, right? Who like yeah. they don't really know what they're doing. They're yeah. you know they're nervous. They're trying their best, but that doesn't mean they do it right all the time. So I give everyone yeah. the benefit of the doubt until they give me a reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, rich Mister, like, so you you have a very kind of positive attitude against like yeah. in, with everything that you do in your channel. So I haven't seen like basically any negativity towards your, <laughs> what you do but like uh, maybe you also had kind of this experience from like previous like you said i think it was street fighter or like uh, yeah. enforcing rules or any experience with that then yeah because sometimes um like with any competitive game nobody likes to lose or yeah. kind of feel that they've lost unfairly so that's when the assault comes out that's yeah. when the kind of yeah, you cheese some wins, that yeah. kind of stuff comes out. So uh, in the Arms Punch Club, we just kind of went not just kind of with swearing rules or bad language and things like that. It was more about the positivity as well. So mm -hmm. if you have lost to something that you feel is cheesy, yeah. discuss it. See how you could overcome it rather than kind of just be destructive and kind of saying, oh, that was rubbish, that was cheap, yeah. that was broken. We'll Jones. try and see if you can find a way. Yeah, see if you can find a way around it and yeah. like work together to kind of to solve it so it's yeah. always been like a collaborative thing and i think that's really been quite powerful in the community as well mm. is that we all kind of we air everything out so if we lose to something cheap or we feel it's cheap mm. we talk about it yeah so nothing's kind of hidden away and it's kind of made the group small but it's quite tight as well we've got a really good tight-knit group there as well so yeah. and that's kind of limited the amount of disputes and things so, like, uh, are these, like, kind of experience that you think about from the more online or is it, like, offline as well? Like, uh... I think a lot of it is online as well because I think when you have that anonymity uh, yeah. of online as well, mm. there's no kind of... Um, you face the guy in ranked. Mm. He's done some... He's run away on um, Cinema Do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Getting flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it hurts, it hurts, but... Once you kind of can maybe put a face so that you see why they're doing that, maybe they're just new to the game, they don't know how to kind of play in an effective manner, that's all they can do at that point in time. Yeah. They think that's a, maybe a legitimate strat. Yeah. If you discuss that and maybe train them up so they can play in a more effective way, it's kind of a good way to get around that rather than just um, like demonizing yeah. the behavior. Yeah. yeah. No, I see what you mean. I think... Uh... I was also thinking about like offline. I, d I guess like Arms hasn't had a lot of offline, so we basically haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah. I think when uh, we kind of do that, I think uh, I hope that we can be like uh, in uh, how do you say it? like before everyone else. I sorry, my English is like breaking on me. But uh, basically, what I'm talking about, like I was at an offline event for uh, it was it was. Tekken, uh, like yeah. I, I play that super casually, like I played it that with my brother, and I just joined a tournament, and I was like, yeah, I played the Japanese arcades, I'm down, <laughs> and then uh, I actually like managed to beat one guy, and uh, like <laughs> who was playing it seriously, and he just like freaked out, punched the table, <laughs> threw away oh, his controller, God. and ran away. Wait, really? Yeah, and then oh, he he, oh he like he, he he cussed me out as well. Like uh, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Basically, he said something in Swedish that, like, you can't really say in, like, public spaces in a, like, wow. small room with 60 people. Uh, and, and so when nice. that happened, I was just, like, sitting there, like, with my hands up. And everyone, because everyone was just, like, looking at me because I was the only one sitting there. And they heard someone <laughs> scream. So I was just, like, it wasn't 
Like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, and then when I talked to the tournament owners there, I was like... Because I felt, like, really weirded out by the event. Like, I was just like, okay, uh, like, this is not welcoming at all. Yeah. Uh, and then I ar- asked the tournament owners, and I was like, so, like, does this does this happen on the regular? And they were, yeah. they're, the only thing that they said was just like, oh, yeah, you were kind of unlucky. That guy rages. Like, that's the only guy who basically <laughs> rages, and you're, like, you were unlucky to get him. Oh and I was just oh, like, no. okay, but, like, I don't kind of want to go here again if I'm, like, yeah. if that's, yeah. like, how it's going to be. Uh so th- I, but yeah. So I, I hope that we can like stay on top of that when it actually comes to offline stuff as well. Um, yeah. And now diatonic with like your perspective and kind of also um, maybe weaving into that, like how you view the rules for your tournaments as well. Like, have you had any uh, experience there where people have just like been breaking rules? And I know that there's like lag discussion. We'll take that right after yeah. this. But yeah. just uh, rules in general, like. Cheating, even I don't know. Uh, I haven't had any yet, luckily. Um, but I think my kind of perspective on this is every fighting game has its issues. I mean, it, Marvel, yeah. Tekken, KOF, like any of them, they always have incidences like yeah. this because it just happens. Yeah. And I think that how the community reacts to it and what the people in charge do says more about the community than the incident. I mean, yeah. it happens all the time. So from – and I was out of the loop on this one, so I had to get caught up. But from mm. what I understand about the issue, it seems like it was handled well and it mm. doesn't seem like it's grown into much more than a one-time kind of isolated incident. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. And I think with a small community like this, the better show we can put on for the, the, the FGC at large and the rest of the really established fighting games, I think the more willing they are to let us kind of, you know, slide in with the other tournaments. I mean, Evo Japan's a big deal, but yeah. so I think in general, it's how we react to issues like this, like the, the rules and the, the common courtesy stuff, yeah. how we react. Cause I mean, there's a fine line between salt and actually BMing somebody. Yeah. So we have to watch for when somebody crosses the salt line to the BMing somebody. Yeah. I think like um like Diatonic was saying as well, um, because it's a Nintendo game as well, that's what we've got to remember as well. So Nintendo, as much as we think that they're kind of not paying attention possibly, they actually probably are to like little bits like tournaments and things like that. They've got a lot of guys who are kind of in the scenes, like behind the scenes. Uh, and stuff as well so if we want any chance of kind of widening out the players that go to these events and get invited we definitely need to have that kind of positivity as well if nintendo has to choose between kids playing a game that are looking nice and like cussing toxic players they're definitely gonna choose kids uh, and in yeah. gamescom there was uh, this uh, scenario where phallus wanted to play in the tournament but he didn't even get a response and then the tournament had kids so i was kind of using that um, kind of scenario as an example, but uh, so hopefully I I I hope in the future that uh, that we are able to kind of um, stay on top of these things. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, chat uh, and the stream that I was <laughs> muted there. I wanted to mute myself to let so you wouldn't hear my breathing. But uh, <laughs> the and then after that I asked Diatonic now like about enforcing rules in tournaments and such. Uh, like where, like how do you go on about that? Because you uh, are, I guess, one of the most uh, or one of the more known uh, tournament or- owners in Arms. I I actually don't know a lot of them in the community, and you mm. have been kind of taking that spot, I guess. So, um, for me, it's uh, so my background. I've played fighting games. I've been in the FGC a little bit, but my background as as far as organizing and kind of making calls like that has been from trading card games. I mean, I'm a big Pokemon fan, um, <laughs> I, but I grew up playing TCGs and judging them and being a head judge for those. So I've always been taught in those situations. It's a lot about gauging the situation and trying to hear yeah. both sides of the issue mm. because i can't tell you how many times i know we're getting to the lag thing but mm. i can't tell you how many times yesterday i got pms on discord of <clears> like <throat> my opponent's lagging i want them disqualified and i'm like okay well i need to know more yeah. so with with rules calls and judge calls and things like that it's all about you know you have to determine what's really going on because i mean and it's nothing against anybody in the community, but you can't just trust what players are saying because there's always salt involved. There's always yeah. – maybe somebody didn't explain it well enough. So that's mm. why I'm always big on take screenshots. It's so easy on the Switch to take a screenshot of a victory yeah. screen, take screenshots of like the menus and stuff because I had an issue yesterday behind the scenes mm. where um, 
I got a mod call for a player uh, submitted results incorrectly on Smash GG. Mm. So they wanted to fix that. And then their opponent said something about that they switched characters after a disconnect. And I was like, yeah. okay. okay, so this is probably more of a uh, rules infraction than anything. Yeah, yeah. But they had they had no screenshots of it. They they showed me some stuff from Discord. But I found out that neither of them actually followed the, the character announced rule. And I was <laughs> oh, like, no. I don't have any evidence of anyone picking yeah. a specific character other than yeah. this person said, oops, didn't mean to go spring, man. And I was like. <laughs> so yeah. it, it it's i can't say like there's one way to handle a situation like that because mm. they're all different yeah. but yeah. yeah it's just a i always encourage people to screenshot mm. if there's a problem contact me immediately don't be like okay well something happened we're just going to keep going and yeah. don't contact me after the set do it in the middle i know it's a pain in the butt but that's yeah. that's usually my advice to people no and i like first of all uh, i think there's a lot of people who kind of even though the the angry DMs are the one that sticks out. I think there's a lot of people that appreciate uh, your, what you do for the community, Diatonic, because yeah, uh, it's like the silent majority. Um, but uh, what I was gonna say also is that like the there's a lot of rules that I've noticed the, in the arms tournaments that are also not being followed in terms of the ones that are actually written right. out. Because yeah. uh, the the thing that actually bothers me the most is that uh, in on Smash GG you can like choose your character and uh, before you pick who is winning or not, and nobody does that. They just pick like the win, and then there's like a question mark. So if you're moving yeah. through the bracket, and then you can like you can't see who you're gonna face because there's just like a question mark oh, yeah. all the way through. And I like I like to kind of plan ahead and see like okay next round I'll probably face uh bite and bark. Then I'm just like kind of having that in the back of my head, but then it's just like, and that's not being enforced at all, <laughs> and it's kind of, yeah. uh, it's just my kind of uh, something that grinds my gears, I guess, uh, but yeah. I think there's, uh, I, is it because like uh, people don't really kind of take the rules seriously because it's still such a small community, or like? That could be a part of it, I, I think. And a few people have told me about this, and I'm I'm probably going to do it for for UIA four in October. A lot of people have said that the there's a rule in UIA where you have to announce what character, and because it's a customs tournament, what arms you're going to play. Mm. And I don't really know why I did that in the beginning. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things I don't know why I did in the beginning, yeah. but that's one that's kind of stuck around that I don't see a point in. Mm. Um, and I was just going to add, there are a lot of like I think somewhat unrelated mm -hmm. i think there are a lot of great things about smash gg yeah. in terms of tournament organization it looks really nice like it's that really yeah. sexy sleek esports kind of thing yeah. but in terms of running an online tournament mm -hmm. uh you can notice if you go on the bracket how many dqs there are and people get stalled yeah. out for so long because yeah. smash gg does not have a way to auto drop people that don't check in for round one uh. if you use something like challenge you can set a, a timer where once the tournament starts, if you don't check in, mm. like just click the check in button, you get yeah. dropped from the bracket. Smash GG doesn't have that. Yeah. So I think that's another thing. Like, But yeah, the character selection thing, I, I know it's a thing. Yeah. And I'm probably just going to like do what Smash does where you can do a double blind character pick if you want to keep it secret, which people don't anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I know it's frustrating. There's there's plenty of things that I have to work on. I got a lot of I got a list of things that I want to change and do. So yeah, yeah. No. I, I, but I would, I would agree. It's probably a point of people aren't taking it as seriously as something like Smash or Street Fighter yet because it's mm -hmm. not as big. And, and uh, to kind of piggyback on that uh, a yeah. little bit, if you if you'd let me, um, yeah, sure. I I I cast my school uh, for my college. We do a lot of local lands yeah. for a lot of different games. So I cast a lot of League of Legends, right? And so, because I'm a caster, I kind of have to help along with, like, the rules and moving things along in that regard. And so, we we had a specific instance once where, like, you know, there, for League of Legends, there are specific pause rules, right? Where it's like, okay, if we're going to pause the game, you have to make sure it's for this reason, these reasons, and not any of these reasons. Mm -hmm. And okay. we'll some some guy randomly just paused the game. He's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. He left to go to get the, ba the bathroom, <laughs> got his whole team disqualified. It's. I think it's strictly like people not following the rules. It's strictly yeah. a case of like they don't read the rules. They just don't. Yeah. yeah. And I can tell you for a fact. I know there are people that don't read the rules because yeah. I, I I occasionally get a PM that are like, "How do we do stage striking or what stages are legal?" And I'm like, <laughs> I literally will just comment. <laughs> I'll put at everyone hashtag rules because then you yeah. can just click on the word rules yeah. and it uh, take you right. To the I, I actually like. Yeah, uh, I know that's a thing. 
No, I um, and there's so I just wanted to note also here for anyone watching, there's so many like uh, Twitch clippable moments here where you can actually send these comments that Diatonic is saying to Smash.gg so we can actually like <laughs> fix this shit. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, and uh, but I also like I had an experience now the first round of the tournament yesterday actually, which was against a player that I had not seen in the community before, and I'm always like, oh sweet, a new player that I could be really good because I don't know. Um, yeah. And then that player just came in and just said, like, uh, I think the person said, like, so what stage do you want? And I was just like, no. Like, oh, yeah, we, I, I did see that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm like, no, you have to do, like, the banning pick. And he was like, okay, but I'm Master Mummy. I'm like... <laughs> sure, like that doesn't yeah, interject. Like, the stage too, and I'm like, that's a great advantage to have. But man, yeah, just... and the, and then he was just like, after uh, I was like, okay, well I'll just pick my favorite map then, and I will go into it. And then before he going into it, he was like, this is default, right? I'm like, no, no, this is not default. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and, then... and I can't do anything about that. Like I made, oh. I went into Photoshop and made those like nice kind of like you could print it out and put it in the game like yeah. box, yeah. like a rule book. Yeah. I, I can't get anybody to like. I can't force people to do it. Like it's just never gonna happen. So yeah. it, it happens. I'm used to the PMs that are like. So what are the rules? I I'm used to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, what? That actually like. This kind of discussion about the rules, like in the tournaments, uh, we, we're gonna get back to that. I just wanted to get like a last kind of point because we began with the kind of uh, racism incident that was two weeks ago. Yeah. So I just wanted to get like the final kind of say of that. So, so like, what do you think needs to be done as the community grows bigger with arms, like for these kind of t uh, not just racism rules, like any kind mm -hmm. of rules that uh, for people to be comfortable and for the community to be inviting. Uh, like, wh where do you what do you think needs to be done going forward? Maybe, Rich, Mister, you can begin. Yeah, I think um, we just need to act really, really quickly. Like you said, the quicker we get things like this sorted, um, the easier it is for everybody. But it also means that everyone in the community take responsibility as well. So if you see like a racist incident take place, uh, kind of get involved, shut it down as much as you can and let somebody within the community know, like one of the community leaders of the mods yeah. as well. So it's all about getting it sorted really fast. Yeah, and the diatonic? Yeah, I was going to kind of piggyback off of that and mention, like, this is something that's going to happen, and it has yeah. to be a reactive sort of thing. There's nothing you can really do proactively to stop it, because if nobody's going to follow the rules, they're, they're just not they're going to break the rules. So, yeah, no. yeah I was going to add specifically to – that was basically my thing, was if you see something, say something. Let me mm -hmm. know. Let anybody prominent in the community know to get it taken care of. That was, that was it. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, Jorpen? I think, uh, at least speaking from the player perspective, I think the top players, we need to set the example of how we want this yeah. community to be. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to, every, every like community for every like competitive game is completely different. Like if you look at league, it's really like formal, right? A lot of the players, yeah. at least in their for, in their communications, there are a lot of formal interviews and things like that. So like, say like, you know, the closest, I'd say the closest relative to arms, like smash, right? Yeah. It's not as formal. It's a lot more casual and grassroots and stuff like that. And I mean, it's going to be up to the players to really say, like, what do we want going forward? I think none yeah. of us want, like, any sort of racism, <clears throat> sexism, things like that. We want everyone to be welcome. Yeah. yeah. But do we necessarily, do we want to keep our kind of roots as we are right now, where it's kind of like, you know, you can see the top players and be like, man, I really don't like this. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of like a degree of severity thing. Like, I, I tend to think I'm one of the more level-headed people. I'm like, I really don't like this. Here's why. But a lot of the top players right now are just like, this sucks. I hate this. Yeah, yeah. I no. Change it right now, or, or else, yeah. you know. And but like, I'm just kind of like, well, I just don't like it. I'll play through it, and then we can talk about it later and fix these issues going forward. No, that's uh, that's a really good. Yeah, point. that's a good point. Yeah, good points from all of all of you. And I think also something that I just wanted to briefly mention is that, uh, like, looking at arms, I think there's a lot of players that are. Uh, and this is by no way like an excuse for like uh, harassment or anything like that. But there, I think there's a lot of players that are very new to kind of fighting games uh, or like yeah. fighting game communities in special. Yeah, and, and me too. I was like <laughs> in my first fighting game. <laughs> yeah, right I, here, I, like, I was from shooters, so like <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, and um, I think, uh, but just like also players that don't even play games, like people just like oh, yeah. I'll pick up a switch and then they get the arms and then it's just like hey, there's a tournament and then they join and then there's like. They don't know anything about the rules, but uh, I yeah. think um, if we can lead by a good example, then at least we can create like a uh, a place where people 
actually want to know the rules and like want yeah. to get into the game. Um, but okay, so moving on to the next topic, which is okay. the uh, kind of longly awaited uh, lag topic that has been kind of because <laughs> uh, it like okay, so for anyone that uh, did not uh, kind of was not aware of what happened, uh, I I can just like briefly explain it to everyone, which was that. Uh, there was a tournament yesterday, uh, Up in Arms 3, which uh, Diatonic was the tournament owner of. Um, and there were cases in this tournament where uh, there was an, one top player, uh, I think it was Resolve, who dropped out from the tournament due to lag. And then there was also this um, finals, the actual grand finals between Meow, who is in Fellows in Arms, and Gore, who we probably, most of us know, as the yeah. Helix player. Um, and... Uh, there was a lot of complaints like during this game about lag and unfortunately like Gore had to uh, leave so he forfeited the finals uh, against Meow <clears throat> and I actually want to make this dis distinction because a lot of people were saying that he dropped out to Meow lagging so much but it was actually mm -hmm. like he had to leave so that was what happened. Yeah. Now it also was that this game contained a lot of lag so that kind of rose the discussion about uh, lags in um, arms and how we're kind of supposed to view it because we have no rules about lags right yeah. now and uh, comparing us to other <clears> games <throat> like as uh, as i said now before like i'm from shooters like uh, basically in the team fortress community that, that i was in the european community was only playing by themselves like we could barely play against people in israel and russia because it was too laggy we would never play against North America or Asia. And uh, a lot of the times, like in StarCraft, the South Koreans play by the South Koreans. They only mm -hmm. play in that country. And the North Americans by themselves. So ARMS is in that specific case where we're just like... And, and a very special one where we're actually like... We had a Japanese player in the Up in ARMS tournament, for example. Uh, yeah. And Miao, who is from Pakistan. Me, from Sweden. A lot of people from America and Canada. Um so this, I know th this is gonna like sound like a huge question, but like, <laughs> do you, does anyone have any ideas of how to fix this? Because uh, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, there, there was a discussion about this yeah. in the UIA server. Uh, I, I've this been morning. fighting with people all day about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, but uh, so Jorpin, do you may um, like might want to uh, begin like uh, take this kind of big question? Oh uh, boy. Yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so. We can break it down at least. So yeah, to start, I want to say a couple things that yeah. may not seem related, but they will be related. One, this is a really complicated issue. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily anyone's fault. From what I have gathered and what I want to stress this, very limited knowledge I have of networking, I think this is 100% on Nintendo. There's mm. something wrong with certain servers that people ping to in certain mm. areas that cause them to have issues. That's what I think. Hmm. Two, I, I think the best way to fix this is region locking. I mm. know everyone hates me for it, mm. and they're just like, oh, you're just mad, because I did spend, like, two hours, like, you know, on stream, like, just sitting there, like, hey, like, just, like, you know, like, oh, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah. But I was trying to, you know, like, not, it, I was, I was honestly, like, I was really frustrated, and I wasn't frustrated at, like, anything in particular, right? It was more just a frustration of, like, how do you fix this? Because like it, it sucks for everybody. You know, it's, I'm not saying you're like, oh, NA is just lagging against these people and they have an advantage. No, everyone's lagging in these global mm. tournaments. Yeah. And like, it's 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 not good that I have to prepare specific strategies when I play for like, oh, this per I know this person they're gonna lag. Here's what the strategy I need to do because yeah. they're gonna lag. That's not good at all. There should be there shouldn't be that. Um, I think region locking is the easiest way because. So far from what I've gathered from this is all anecdotal, you know, yeah. I don't have any I haven't been done tests on this. Yeah. Is that people usually like vast majority of the time people playing each other in America are perfectly fine. People in America playing people from like the UK or certain other European countries are perfectly fine. But some countries like they it just doesn't. There's like some kind of like packet loss where people mm. struggle mm. and you can't like things are like you know there's triple speed punches that's one of the factors of lag there if when it gets really bad people yeah. are actually teleporting or like they're hitting you mm. while they're on the ground. Yeah. And things like that. There isn't an easy way to fix this. I think if we want the game to be competitive and we want people to see the game at its best, mm. that we need to make sure that the online experiences and the pe things that people actually see, right? Mm. Not just like the online, not just like people playing by themselves online, but seeing these major tournaments. When we have top players complaining about like lag and having to drop out, I do not condone them dropping out. I think yeah. everyone should play through their matches even if they lag. I 100% yeah. I think. 
Be like be like me, kids. Play your games and just complain <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> uh, but I, I feel like everyone should play it through, and then going forward, you know, after the turn, be like, okay, this is where we have the problem issues. We need to make yeah. sure how do we solve this essentially, mm-hmm. and be really civil about it instead of just being really angry about it. So yeah. one question I have for you then, and it's because like for me. Um, like, I come from a shooter background, like, I played a lot of Team Fortress in my days, and uh, so for me, like, <clears throat> if you played someone, like, in even North America, where you had, like, maybe 160 ping, or, like, 100 and maybe maybe 120 if you were, like, Sweden to New York, um, <clears throat> basically, when you got up to, like, 120, the game was, like, severely <clears throat> unplayable, like, <clears throat> you would get stuck in doors, you would, like, teleport in and out from, like, buildings, and then... You would like you would walk and then you were dead in the next second and you had like no idea what was even going on. Uh, and then <clears throat> I compare that experience to like what I've experienced now in Arms, which is like to me uh, in this scenario I have felt like this is so good and I and yeah. I know that people <laughs> yeah. are frustrated about the lag, but for me like um, like when I played Overwatch now uh, a year ago I was so surprised that I could even play with North American players. That's the first yeah. time I've had, like, a fluid experience where I'm just like, hey, and then even, like, it's it's much worse, but I can play it with people from Japan as Lucio because he just, like, doesn't do anything. But uh, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, for me, then now, like, when I was in the tournament with uh, Omega Pen, who is one of the Japanese streamers, it was laggy. Like, uh, I'm not going to lie about that, but yeah. I could actually play the game. And I felt like, uh, even though it was frustrating, it was, like could do it like i felt like it was something still there um so that's why i kind of like uh, am against the uh, region locking uh, and yeah. and my sorry this was kind of long and drawn out sorry uh, but uh, my question then for you jorpen just to kind of like dwell a bit more into it uh, when you said that uh, this is why like i don't want to like when people's like high competitive players start dropping out, something is wrong, and I don't like I don't agree with uh, that being a case. Like, why? Why do you think like that? W- like, what's the kind of core issue? Is it that like the that they can't be at their kind of maximum skill? Is that like the issue at hand, or like what makes it so frustrating? Is what I'm kind of curious I, about. I think it's it's a combination of factors. Um... Like as you said, like, uh, you know, it depend if whether lags a problem or not is highly dependent on a game. I most of the time I think it's a game issue, right? Yeah. Like you said, you don't have problems with Overwatch, right? I actually do. Mm. I the way it's programmed is they they specifically go on record saying this is like we favor the shooter every time, right? Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. what that what that means is like whoever shot first is going to get the advantage, right? Okay. In a lag situation. That doesn't necessarily make it fair, depending on what abilities and things are like are being used, right? That's yeah. their choice. It's not. I don't think Overwatch has huge arc- overarching issues, but it just goes to show, like you know, certain lag protocols. I guess you could say, yeah. in terms of like coding the game, are that. I think Nintendo, whether it was intentional or not, kind of did like we're gonna favor the person lagging, yeah, because those usually seem to be the people who are like, well, I don't have any issues when like the person playing them is kind of like, oh, what is happening? Everything's like seven times faster than it's supposed to be. This person's now mm. behind me. I didn't even think that was possible. Yeah. <laughs> Help, you know. <laughs> but no. but to, to answer your question specifically about like the top players, I think it's a combination of factors. I think, honestly, as far as I know, I when I I as far as I know, out of like all the top players, I'm one of the older ones. Yeah. Mm. I'm 22. Yeah. Yeah. I, I <laughs> that's don't, that's I don't not know, good. <laughs> I don't know if we were gonna do like an age check here, but I'm 23. Uh, Oof. <laughs> I'd say yeah, we're all we're all we're all we're all a pretty young bunch, and you know, as being young, you know, like as the younger and younger you get, right? Like it, you're gonna be more emotional about things. I yeah, think it's no. I think it's honestly just truthfully like it's it's mostly an emotion thing, because it's like, well, I'm a top player. It, I'm gonna put you know put you in a mindset of like someone potentially. This yeah, is all theoretical. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you. I can't read minds. Sadly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like this person's a top player, top five. You know, they're they're fighting somebody who's lagging. They could be in the mindset like, well, I'm better than them, right? Because mm. you go the statistical, like, oh, I'm top five. They're like top 30 or whatever. You know, I'm better than them. I should be winning. And then they start lagging. You start latching on to all these issues. You know, it's like, well, now it's lagging. Are they really better than me if they win? 
if they win, it's like, does that really show that they're better than me? Everyone's going to point to that no. and be like, yeah. oh, look, that person beat you in top, like, 100. They're better than you. You're top five. Mm. You're, you're bad. Mm. You know, it's kind of – it's. I think it's hugely an ego thing, and I think – Yeah, I think an they're, ego. They're, they're, Yeah, exactly. Like, there, there's a huge ego thing in regards to the top Overwatch players. Overwatch <laughs> arms. Sorry. I'm, too, many, too many competitive games. Fellows We're in just Overwatch. talking about Overwatch. Yeah. I'm, it's got it on the mind now. i got to yeah. climb those rank points. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's honestly just a huge ego thing in the arms. Like, I've we found, like, honestly, like, a lot of the top players I've talked to, like, they've got huge egos. Mm. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to be honest because, mm. like, you know, even I even I can be guilty of that where it's like, you know, yesterday I was like, well, I was get, I was losing a lot. Mm. And when I was losing, you know, when you get in that mindset, you're kind of like, oh, is, do I suck? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just gets really tilting and you start latching onto things. And, like, well, I do think there was a lag issue, you know? Mm. Yeah, but And I think that, that just exacerbates the issues of, like, these ego problems that a lot of us have. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I I see what you mean. It's like kind of uh, that that kind of lag could ba- basically to like kind of summarize it a bit. Like so, the the lag uh, probably can tilt a very high skilled player into like yeah. playing worse than they should have done, and then that can mm-hmm. actually affect the game, which is a very good point. And uh, like even though I'm not for region locking, I I really understand like what you say there. And but so kind of to give. Uh, the spotlight to the uh, diatonic and rich mister too like so yeah. uh like rich mister what what has been your kind of thoughts about this i haven't uh, have you been in the tournaments or like as a player or? yeah no i've not that's um region wise as well so mm. i work full time and like i have a family as well so mm. i'm very limited in the time that i have that i can devote specifically to like arms and yeah. tournaments and stuff and the majority of the tournaments so far have been in US times, yeah. which kind of is really difficult for me to get involved in. So I've not been able to get involved in tournaments um, that much as a result of that. Uh, but I know a lot of players in the um, the APC, they've been involved in some of the tournaments as well. We've got a guy called Okrim. He's been, he's oh, been yeah. trying to get into loads and loads of tournaments yeah, yeah. as well. So his experience has been, I think it's been good. It's been positive so far, but I can understand kind of how maybe splitting the two um two well the multi regions yeah. like having a upper region like could be really detrimental to to players like him who want to kind of get involved in as much um in as many matches as possible really yeah uh, i think uh, speaking also as like a, a person from europe uh, it's like uh, to me like that kind of scares me like it to be honest for the region locking because then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be basically like locked out from the tournaments and that's going to be like oh, okay well I can't do anything with this game anymore because uh, right now there are top players in Europe but compared to the US I'm I'm and I'm just going to pull this number out of my ass here it's like going to be like 20% to 80% with like America yeah. being 80 and Europe being 20 or something it, that's what it feels like at least in the competitive community um uh, another thing is that, uh, like, for me, it was also, like, uh, Meow was someone that kind of joined my Twitch channel, like, very early on when I just started streaming. And then he kind of got involved in my community and we got to know each other. So it was like, I have, like, huge empathy for him and how, yeah. like, he, his situation, because uh, since he is a player from Pakistan, and he, he said it himself, he, he knows no one that uh, plays any like arms or nintendo games there was like a couple in uae like united yeah. arab mm-hmm. emirates which is like another yeah. uh, another country that's like not that close and it's just like he it's kind of hard to connect to them so it's just like uh like it's it it could make it really difficult for the european scene in that sense yeah, but uh, um like how do you think there's like any way for a ca- kind of european players um to like help with the lag or like can we do anything to like make it better for us or do you think region locking will probably like be what's going to happen uh, i'm speaking to you rich mister then of course yeah uh, so i think from a, like an eu point of view i think the thing that we need to do i think region locking is likely to happen for a lot of tournaments i think it's one of them things that kind of as much as we'd want to keep things united as things go um as progress i think there will be a bit of a separation but i think it's going to be down to um, players and like streamers and things like that in the UK to step up. Mm. Uh, not in the UK, the EU to step up and start doing tournaments themselves as yeah. well uh, to really grow the scene um, there as well. I think there's potential. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of um, players and things who maybe have access to equipment. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing at the APC is kind of 
on a Tuesday night uh, is doing like a recorded lobby. It's okay. not really a tournament, oh, yeah. but it's like a recorded uh, arena thing. We upload the matches later down as well. So oh, cool. it's a way of kind of getting um, high level play out there yeah. and kind of doing something to increase uh, visibility mm. as well. Because I think that's the main thing with um, arms at the moment is that we need to increase the visibility. Yeah. I think the more that we kind of provide um, like footage, yeah. I think the more people will kind of come back uh, to the um, community or maybe even get in, interested as well. So I think uh, the lag issue is it's a tricky one. There's not much we can uh, do about it rule-wise or enforcement-wise, but we just need to kind of get more players in Europe, uh, the UK and stuff, um, providing opportunities for top players to play. Yeah. And the, like, I kind of want to continue on to that before we move on to your perspective, Diatonic. And it's like the, of course, I kind of also realized that since we are in, back to my like pulling out number out of my ass thing, like the twenty versus eighty percent thing, uh, it's kind of silly for me to be like, oh, you eighty percent majority have to like adapt to yeah. me. Like it's it feels it doesn't feel good, but at the same time, I I feel kind of helpless when I'm just like there is like there's a smash community in Stockholm and like I'll show up and with my switch and be like yeah arms and they're just like <laughs> and they, they'll just like they'll they'll be like in the corner with like melee and being like and I, I'm just like eh, and they're like it's like there's nothing here and then uh, yeah. then it's like oh where's the other community like oh well that's like the now this is not very far for American standard but like the, across the entire country in Sweden it's just like I can't I can't do that, um, yeah. but there there are like uh, attempts too to, and it's good that you told that you had about the Tuesday night thing. I I really didn't know about that, and I'm glad that I found out. Uh, another thing is that uh, in Sweden, in this I think in February, there there's going to be like a huge uh, tournament that is taking over for another Swedish tournament in Arms. Uh, it's it's uh, mainly focused on Smash and Tekken, but they're going to include Arms as well. So I'll I'm trying to get people hyped for that so we can actually yeah. like have a first offline arms community uh, tournament. That's I mean we had the one in the UK uh, for the i40 no i56. I don't know what number they're on. Yeah, I think it was i64 yeah. I even. I like it's like too <laughs> it's way too high. Uh, which the uh, soul obviously won won there. Um, but I think uh, I think it's gonna be get difficult for Europe if we, if this yeah. happens basically. Another thing I just want to briefly mention is LAN adapters. I don't yes, know yes, uh, yeah. if, uh, <laughs> like, if anyone from Europe is watching this or any other yeah. country that's not America, please buy LAN adapters to your Switch yeah. because it could really s improve your connection. Uh, and uh, I wish I was sponsored by a LAN adapter company right now, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just like saying that as a P like PSA to everyone. Please buy that. It's they're like tw yeah. uh, ten to twenty dollars, or I guess I don't know what that's in euro. If I'm gonna be honest, Swedish crowns for the win. Uh, but <laughs> I like uh, I I want to hear Diatonic's view on the thing. Who basically, I guess you have a lot of kind of thoughts since like yesterday and everything that happened. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the ball's kind of in my court on this one right yeah. now, <laughs> since obviously Nintendo can't provide an insta fix. Yeah. So I think. I thought about this quite a bit throughout the day today and yesterday after everything was done. I think, and I'm speaking strictly from a, like, please don't stop showing up to tournaments, but I will say this. I don't think this is a problem that can ever be fixed for online tournaments at all because it's yeah. going to happen because everybody has a different connection. Mm. Everybody has a different internet provider. There's all kinds of factors that go into networking. So an online tournament is never not going to have the lag issue. Now that shouldn't be an excuse to not do anything about it because I think <laughs> Not doing anything about it is just as bad as just saying, all right, well, UIA is USA only. Bye. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Either. So, yeah, I think that's kind of the fatal flaw of online tournaments. So my solution, not an easy one, has just been we need more offline tournaments. And yeah. um, this is not an official announcement. So <laughs> <laughs> this is not, this is you not can't take it back. No, you can't take it back. <laughs> Basically, I was just going to say that I'm, I'm in talks at least um, in Indianapolis. I know it's not the biggest hub of like fighting games, but um, yeah, I there's can get down there. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's an arcade down there in one of the malls that does big Smash tournaments. One of my friends, uh, Spooks McDog, he actually ran uh, one of the UIA tournaments a week or two ago for me. I, I had them sub in. Um, 
he's very big in the indie smash scene and really the the smash four scene all over the country he just goes all over the place i hear about it all the time but um i'm in talks with this arcade to try to run arms because their smash community is a lot different from the one you were talking about defer where they're actually really interested in arms and they really want arms to show okay. they actually Oh. Got a bunch of Switch together on, like, the launch Sick. day. They had a Smash tournament around then, and they played Smash and ARMS. But they don't have anybody there that is strictly just ARMS just running them. Yeah. So mm. I'm trying, and again, not an official announcement, but I'm <laughs> trying to run either a regional or a major sometime maybe in December, January yeah. of next year, something like that. Yeah. Hopefully before EVO Japan has, like, a lead-up to it, which would be great. Yeah. But th- I think that's... That's really the best solution to it is turn it into melee where it's all about the offline tournament. It's all about the yeah. travel. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, I I think. Um, but now, uh, okay. So before we kind of move on to this topic, because it's it's probably a, like like uh, we had we were talking about defaults and customs for like maybe four episodes in a row, and I I think this uh, I think this topic is gonna be like a returning one, and there's like we can't cover all bases of this. Uh, but I'm just hoping that uh, at least for now there's um, like in the upcoming tournaments <laughs> like the the least thing that we can do is that everyone buys a LAN, LAN adapters to actually like yeah. kind of improve like make <clears throat> sure that everything is as good as they can be because uh, I mean it, it's different from country to country and uh, like I don't know it's the, it, the, the speeds are different as well and uh, like one yeah. thing that I also kind of I'm a bit frustrated about, which uh, I'm. It's like a reoccurring uh, theme when it comes to Nintendo is their lack of transparency. Like uh, they, like I, I really like mm. what they're doing for the like for the the game and like how Yabuki is like such a prominent role and like going into those streams and just in Japan at least. Uh, but I feel like there's so many questions that we have. We're just like uh, it's gonna be at that level where like as you said, Jorpen, we're just like. It, the, like the way that you were talking about it where it's just like there is some places that have like ping issues where it's just like Nintendo could basically just be like oh yeah this is how it works now you can like work yeah. around this but they're never probably gonna be that and they're just yeah. gonna be like okay we'll let we'll let them figure it out like they'll get yeah, there no, we, <laughs> we, we need to keep in mind that Nintendo is, is a Japanese company and along with them being yeah. a Japanese developer there, there yeah. are certain things that come along with that they will never communicate to us. Yeah. I've never. Mm. I in my in my time, you know, doing like game industry things. I have not. I don't. I can't recall like a singular Japanese company that actually like was super transparent and opened up with their English audiences, right? Yeah. And they yeah. were like, "Hey, this is what's going to happen." No, they they balance for Japan, and then they, you know, we're we're a second rate country, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Like that's right. like all of us just collectively. There's Japan, and then the rest of the world, yeah. right? So like you know, they they just they're just like okay, because think of it like this, like. Because you know how games get localization, right? So yeah. say like you know like a game made in America gets localization in Japan, right? Well, maybe they're really open with their their American audience, but like Japan, just like oh, you just get language fixes. Like it's yeah. you don't need more than that, you know, because we don't speak Japanese. We just pour it off to somebody else. That's kind of what happens with Nintendo, right? Is yeah. like they mm-hmm. they they might explain their in depth processes and thoughts to the Japanese audience. I don't mm. think they do, based yeah. on what I know. But it's it's so much more work for them to be like to go even if even if we are the bigger audience, right? Mm. It's just. There's so much more effort involved in them reaching out to like the America, America, North yeah. America, Europe, all these other vast geographical areas, right? Yeah. So they just don't do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I definitely. <laughs> I I agree. And that's like even even as someone like who kind of briefly worked in Japan with games there, like I I was kind of inside one of those companies and being like, hey, we should tell how things work here. And like my boss would be like, no, we shouldn't say anything. And I'm just like <laughs> yeah. kind of sitting there and being like, I know everything. And but it's like <laughs> it's like it was really like a weird kind of thing, and it I think definitely it's like uh, company culture kind of getting in the way of yeah. that because even though there is a Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Europe, Nintendo UK, there is even like a Nintendo Sweden, which is like out in the nowhere and they have like they have like a <laughs> mario statue and shit but they don't do anything uh they they they're just all kind of subjects to their overlord which is in japan uh yeah. and that kind of sucks but i uh we're gonna talk more about this and this is gonna be like a topic in the community hopefully that we can um kind of figure out over the coming months because there's gonna be tournaments coming up that are offline and online so i i'm yeah. hoping that we can 
at least get some kind of something out of this, basically. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully people in the chat and like viewing this can kind of see what they think about it as well. Um, so this is kind of not related to what we've been talking about now. Uh, we're going to switch over to our third topic of the evening, which is kind of... I named it <clears throat> Growing the Community, but it's it's also yeah. one of those like vague things where it's just like, eh, I'll just put <laughs> everything in there. Uh, and um, so uh, all... I guess all four of us have like kind of are kind of invested in arms right now in one way or another, and it, for me it's been like uh, I'm really curious to hear like what your goals are for the kind of being like choosing to invest your time in arms and like what you kind of want to do with your time with it. I know that we've kind of touched upon this for like at least diatonic with the regionals and things like that, but mm -hmm. kind of more um, just speaking kind of <clears throat> openly about it maybe. Maybe Jorpen, you could begin if you want to. Uh, like, w w do you have like any current goals when it comes to Arms right now, or is it just kind of, I'm gonna stream Arms sometimes, and then it's gonna be other games, or it's just gonna like BT is gonna develop? Like, how does that look for you? Uh, personally, for me, um, as I said before, you know, streaming's my job. With that comes along certain things. Like, you know, when I first started streaming ARMS, like, I would, you know, it was huge, right? Like, I, I was one of the people getting, like, hundreds of people watching, yeah. and people were super interested in it. Sadly, that is not a reality on Twitch anymore. Yeah. And, and just even even as myself, like, I, I at heart, like, I, I love ARMS, right? But I just, I'm the kind of person who kind of switches it up. Yeah. So I need, like, other experiences. So I, I do plan on keep playing ARMS, you know, at this level as yeah. long as I can, as long as I want to. And I want to keep showing it to people. My, my main goal is, like, because when I talk about R, you because I still have a lot of people come in from my chat and they're like, hey, you know, what happened arms and whatnot? And then other people start asking, like, hey, what's arms? I don't even know anything about it. You know, I'm like, well, I, I play a lot of arms, you know, I yeah. don't really do it on stream. I used to a lot. Mm. And, you know, I try to explain to them, like, this game's really good. I'm always incredibly honest with them. Like, this game's incredibly flawed. Yeah. But it's really good. You yeah. know, and there, there aren't a lot of people playing it, but I feel like there should be more because it, it truly is. Like, I, you know, when Splatoon 2 came out. Everyone was hyped about that. I was kind of like, uh, I, I played Splatoon 2. I was like, this, this kind of like isn't anything special, you know. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, it's good, but it's like, it's just Splatoon 1, but worse. They, they somehow didn't fix anything, just added things. I don't understand this. And I just kept playing Arms. I was like, this is way more fun. I think way more people should play this. Hmm. But as, as is traditional Nintendo tradition, uh, they don't really kind of like reach out and advertise anything that isn't their yeah. main, like. Yeah, franchises. So like you know they'll do Zelda, Mario stuff like they won't even do Metroid anymore. They'll do stuff like Zelda and Mario, right? Yeah. But then all the other other kind of like side stuff is kind of like yeah we'll release it and just see what happens. Yeah. And then you know mm -hmm. they kind of die out if they're like multiplayer focused titles and people are just like what what about this game? There's like I oh, don't worry about it. Next mm -hmm. one's coming out next year. <laughs> Ultra Sun and Moon. <laughs> Literally that. <laughs> yeah. Ultra H Forty dollars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Nintendo. Hey. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's also like a thing we've been saying in the cast in the past. But uh, I ho I hope that you are able to kind of stick in the arms community because I, yeah. I that's one thing that I've been like kind of noticing as well with uh, Tenten Man as well, who is like you and Tenten Man being like one of the, I guess the top streamers for uh, arms. Yeah. And it's like him and you switching on to other games, and I've seen that and been like, well, it's understandable. So uh, yeah. at least from our part here, I don't think you're gonna get any hate, but we hope that you can stick around and uh, yeah. maybe do well in BT so <clears throat> the hype comes back to that. Yeah, uh, yeah no, we're, we're, we're still working on things with that, so I don't want to talk about too much of okay. uh, BT because, you know, we haven't officially launched yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm super hyped about it, though, so I'm really looking forward to that announcement. Uh, as for you, uh, Diatonic, like, as I said, you touched about your goals briefly, but do you have, like, any kind of... Uh, milestones in mind or like anything that you like are aiming for right now i don't think anything you can necessarily quantify i think my goal from the beginning has to has been to bring the community together mm. the best way to do that is to run events that they can all participate in so you get a bunch of people in one spot i mean that's why i go to tournaments because i like to just look up and down rows and see people all playing the same game and everybody yeah. has the same common interest yeah. it's a little different online but so my goal has always been to bring it together and, you know, I want to make – Up in Arms was originally kind of just like, oh, I can't wait for 12 people to play in my tournaments. And now there's almost 300 people in the Discord. <laughs> yeah. So it blew up more than I thought. But it, it was kind of intended as like a 
I guess if you want to call it like the training ground for making yourself into a competitive player. So yeah. Yeah. it's a good place to start because it's easy to get to. It's it's free. You don't have to pay anything to play. Mm. It's online. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. And I think it's kind of evolved into like now one of the forefronts of the community, which yeah. surprises yeah. me. But um, so, yeah, I don't have anything quantifiable necessarily. I would love to be able to run some kind of regional major type thing mm. in the future, in the near future. But nothing really I can quantify other than as long as people keep coming together to play arms, I'm happy. Uh, what, uh, that's great to hear. And I, I'll, I'm kind of I have a question to that. Like, is there any kind of goals that you would have in case of like, um, like kind of prizes for the tournaments or do you like want to keep it being like kind of bragging rights kind of training grounds or do you want to move it if you can that is like onto having kind of prize pools in the tournaments I think uh, this I've been asked this a lot no yeah. surprise about pricing and all that um, I think the biggest reason for me to not do it right now is because of the lag issues that we've talked about because mm. it's only going to cause more problems if you have people playing for money and it's not competitive because mm. people are teleporting all over the stage yeah. <laughs> so for now I haven't been working on it because I want to see how this issue pans out in the yeah. future. It's something I would love to be able to do, and for for a, a live tournament, it's going to happen. Like that, yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. But for an online tournament right now, where we're having these lag problems, I'm trying not to do it, just to keep people from getting more salty. Because I know it's already frustrating. So yeah. okay. I don't want to do it until we can make it more competitive. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, so, Rich, Mister, for you and yeah. kind of Arms Punch Club, is is there like any kind of goals that you have there, or like anything that you're aiming for within the community? Yeah, we've got, actually got a couple of things um, in mind that we want to start um, pushing forward as well. We're coming to the end of our interview series, The Big Ten. Mm. So um, that goes up on the site every Friday. We've kind of postponed it until um, version three comes out. Mm. Because a uh, little plug here as well. We're actually looking for a Mechanica player yeah. and a Master Mummy player uh, who want to do an interview as well. Of course, we'll have Lola Pop as well when uh, she's released uh, a little bit down the line as well. Yeah. And then once um, season one's finished, we're hoping to move on to a season two with slightly different questions mm. that are now more relevant that ARMS has been out for a while yeah. as well. Um, we're hoping to continue with the um, recorded lobbies as well. Mm. And on a Tuesday night, like a, a time that's good for those in the UK and EU mm. um, as well. So that's something we're pushing forward with. Yeah. And yeah, it's just that kind of stuff as well. We're always thinking of things um, that we can do to improve and really bring more people into the community because i think one of the things that's good about nintendo games as well is that they're evergreen titles yeah so even though arms came out like say a couple of months ago there'll still be people picking it up in the holidays yeah like yeah, people will pick point. it up all the time right and they're going to need places to train and learn about the game mm. so we're hoping that at the um the arms punch club we can be one of those resources where people who have just picked the game up can come in and no egos they can learn the game and kind of get involved that way so we're just trying to keep a steady flow of um like in arms related content coming so that by the time when people do pick up games uh pick up the game there'll be something for them to kind of get the teeth into community wise as well so that's our goal that's great and i really appreciate that that's also kind of uh, if i can take that question into my uh, yeah. court as well is that uh, they, I think the kind of uh, constant stream of content is very important in this way. Yeah. And I, that's something I really appreciate with Arms Punch Club. There has been plans of being like another community website that I've been hearing about, but it hasn't even gotten up to running. And you've already yeah. been online for like several months now. So it's just <laughs> like, I, I really appreciate that that, yeah. that exists. Uh, and uh, as if I could speak for myself with like Fellows in Arms, uh, we actually have like a lot of things planned. And a lot of it is like way too overscoped, and we're like we're we're like currently trying. I mean, to, same, but yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're just like trying to figure out where we're gonna like put uh, the limits. And like yeah. one of the things that I can tell about at least now for the stream and like everyone viewing is that we're uh, we're like I was always planning on going to Evo Japan. Like I I, I lived in Japan and I wanted to go back. Evo Japan was like my excuse to just going back there. Maybe I can, yeah. you know, meet my girlfriend's family again. It's like I, I want to go there. But then suddenly I have a team and then it's like, well, more people want to go. Uh, so right now we actually have three people uh, from Fellows in Arms that are like confirmed to go to Evo Japan to compete and yeah. be there. 
Uh, they we're definitely thinking about like doing kind of vlogs and stuff like that. We're also kind of thinking about doing like some sort of documentary, like uh, okay, going there and like filming everything because I have an overly expensive camera that I'm not using, so we should like <laughs> do something with that. Um, so hopefully we can bring that together, and that's like if we do that, I'm so hyped because that's like the yeah, uh, even though amazing. even though I don't want to be like oh my documentary is gonna save the game, it's just more like the. Uh, how you're looking at the Smash Brothers c- documentary and being like, holy shit, that did so yeah. much for uh, yeah. like uh, Super Smash Bros. Uh, other than that, we're also looking to kind of make uh, a website of our own uh, and perhaps having like a community hub there. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but Akio, uh, Akiosho, who is in the team, he has been doing like a leaderboard that's been outside of the Nintendo leaderboard or dashboard, I guess yeah, they call yeah. it, uh, which is based off the tournament uh, records. So uh, basically not just the ladder rank. So we're thinking yeah. of displaying that there. Uh, the arms team battle sheet that I, I, I hope that you've seen, uh, basically yeah. just listing everyone in their teams. And uh, also uh, something with you, Rich Mister, maybe we can do some sort of collaboration with con- content definitely, as well. Definitely. Uh, but uh, moving on to the next question here. Uh, da, 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 um, oh yeah, like since we all are making content one way or another yeah. for arms, uh, I'm kind of curious to hear from you guys if there's anything that you feel like is missing, like currently in mm-hmm. in as for uh, streamed content, videos, pictures. Like, do you, do you think that there's something that we're like currently missing that we should have more of in the community? Maybe Diatonic can be the first one uh, on this. Like, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, live tournaments are definitely important. But I think because that's more that's like a, not necessarily a higher barrier to entry, but not something that everyone's going to be interested in. Uh, I do wish there was more arms streamed on Twitch because yeah, I don't have a ton too. of time to play. Yeah, mm. I don't have a ton of time to play, but I'm at a computer constantly. If I'm in the newsroom, I have access to Twitch 24 hours a day, basically. I'm on my phone all the time. But that's an easy way for people to get interested because they can watch the game and they can kind of see some of the like storyline type stuff with players that we've yeah. seen develop over the past few months. I think that's my biggest missing piece personally. And Twitch has become pretty important to any game's life cycle nowadays, basically yeah. competitive mm. game. So I think that's probably my biggest thing that I wish there was more of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and how about you, Rich, mister? Yeah, I think I've got, um, if let me look at my notes, I've got a, a list of things. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> that I would want to see. <laughs> but I think uh, from somebody coming from a other fighting game community background, I think we need, uh, as an ARM community, more kind of tutorials, more guides. There was a really good series um, by Nev Bamshu. Uh, oh, yeah. Arms, Arms, I think it was Arms Academy. Yeah, Arms and University. Kind of after, Arms, University Arms University, yeah, that's yeah. the one. It's fantastic, fantastic um, uh, series. It really looked at Arms and the mechanics in depth. Mm. And we need more stuff like that. We need, I think, more character tutorials as well for yeah. like um, people who were character mains. Yeah. I think... Um, one of the things uh, that I think is the constant battle of arms as well, because we've not got a really high combo system and there's yeah. no kind of like DHCs and all these kind of really big fancy combos, mm. it's showing um, players why, what, sorry, what high level arms actually looks like yeah. and, and what makes a good player in arms a good player. Mm. So that's something that I've been kind of thinking of um, like looking into uh, for the arms punch club as well is looking get a really really good match something that's got me height mm. and kind of breaking it down the decision yeah. making of the players and really looking at what made um, that good. I see a lot of um, like Street Fighter kind mm. of um, like content creators yeah. do stuff like that as well. I think there's something that arms could benefit from yeah. as well. Uh, I think like website wise as well we've got like um, I think it was Anthers Ladder or. Smash ladders yes. mm. or smash boards def- or something like that. Yeah, smash boards or like poking arena, uh, something like that. And that was kind of like so, um, sorry, what is that? Def- so they're kind of like a, a community, a hub, almost uh, like a forum type thing. But it's okay. this one central location that if you're into poking or if you're into smash, mm. you can go there. There's like tutorials on there. Mm. There's um, loads and loads of different tournament things. listings, especially. Yeah, tournament listings. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. So we, I think we could definitely benefit from something like that for ARMS. Like mm. ARMS Punch Club is more kind of like a, um, 
it's a, a low level kind of website. My skills are not there <laughs> <laughs> to was... produce something that amazing. So uh, yeah. I have to leave that to somebody else to kind of get involved in. But I think we need more um, things that people can get involved in as well that are not just tournaments. So like um, Kumite's as well, maybe a top player uh, could just like for one, a couple of hours, just take on any contender that yeah. comes to fight them like and have that streamed. Yeah. yeah, like Gauntlet. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Or even kind of, have you, have you guys ever watched uh, Cross Counters, uh, The Excellent Adventures of Mike Ross and Gutex? No, no. Have you ever seen that? No. Never even go heard and, of go, it. Go on, YouTube, go on YouTube and watch that. It's fantastic. It's two guys who have been playing Street Fighter from way back in the day and they sit down and they go online. Yeah. Uh, on ranked and just play matches in the, on the couch. It's like a kind of a weekly show uh, that's on there as well. Highly recommend it. And we could just do with things like that mm. for arms, like more upbeat type things that are maybe not just tournaments, yeah. but content that people can kind of um, get sink their teeth into. Yeah, that's a good point. Like I, the, those things I didn't, I kind of unfortunately like forgot about the <laughs> arms university, but that's like, I was really appreciated because the production value was so good yeah that's fantastic as, as well uh, i'm hoping that uh i'm and not making any promises but when we get the fellows in arms website up that we perhaps could be the ones taking that banners for having a forum but we'll yeah. see about that in the future but the, the, very good points actually like uh i hope if if not i'm not taking that banner i hope someone else does <laughs> uh yeah and, and um so uh, for jorpen like do you feel like there's anything missing right now, like in the kind of community, uh, in our arms in general? Maybe not in the game, but just like outside of it. I I think there are three major things. Um, as as Dia said, I I want to see more uh, arms Twitch streams and stuff like that because I want to make more friends. <laughs> just straight up, you know. Yeah. Um, when it's like you know, as people have said, like. I'm gonna quote the famous Kotaku article: "Arms has no legs." Okay, uh, but you know they, when they uh, when they when they mentioned you know when they mentioned like oh there's nobody streaming on Twitch and there's like there's only one there's only one you know like Twitch streamer for Arms like that's basically true. There's like me, there's me, and there's ten right. Mm. As far as like bigger streamers, and I yeah, yeah. put that in quotations because we're both pretty small either way. Yeah, and like I think they're just. It's partly because there isn't. I don't want to say there isn't an audience for it because there is. There's mm. lots of people. It's just that the audience doesn't necessarily show up all the time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't want this to be misconstrued as me like, oh, I need more viewers, oh, or yeah. else they won't stream the game. You know? But like, it's just like you know, I get it. Like people, they necessarily don't want to watch Arms all the time, and I get that. But if there isn't, if there isn't people showing up, then there won't be people streaming it because that's just that's how it works when it's yeah. people's jobs. You know, nobody nobody's just like, oh, I'll just do this in an open room if it's their yeah. job because they can't. Yeah. Um. The second thing, I think, is we need more EU tournaments. I was, uh, as, as mm. he was saying earlier, again, um, I was, we were kind of talking about up in our, well, not up in ours, uh, am I right? You guys, have, you all have arms in the title, I can never remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the tournament yesterday. Up in arms, where, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, we were talking about, I was, I was talking to a lot of Europeans, it's like, well, you know, the main argument against regional like tournaments is like, well, we don't have any tournaments. Yeah. And it's just like, like you need to keep you need to understand like you know there aren't a lot of tournaments in America either. Mm. It's just that we go forward and we host we host them. Yeah. We, like someone needs to step up in those European areas and be like, hey, this is where a tournament's going to be. We're going to have yeah. an online EU centric tournament. Yeah. And I think that's the major issue with this problem right now is that because most of the tournament organizers are in NA, mm. we're you know we're doing NA stuff. Mm. And then the Europeans come over and like, well, why does this work for us? It's like, well, because this is for North America. Yeah. You know, and if if we if it does push comes to shove, and everyone's like, okay, basically across the board, everyone's like region locking, then EU really is going to have to if they want their competitive scene to grow, they're going to have to be like, okay, we need people who got the charisma, the moxie, the guts, yeah. to just sit there and get yelled at for lag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's, that's, that's a fair point. Uh, wait, was that your second or third? I don't. I didn't remember that, the numbers. <laughs> that was that was my second. Um. Mm. Yeah, my third is I I kind of agree with I I just kind of want to agree like I just want to see more like positive stuff like you you yeah you I'm if people know me I'm not the most positive guy I I've, <laughs> I've never been about like you know like oh yeah positivity you know but like even me it's like come on man after a while like this is just there there's a lot of negativity around arms whether it's about mm. the size yeah. of the scene whether it's about the people the top people playing or the yeah. fights or whatever right yeah, yeah and I want people to know like this is a small part of it and we all. I, I, I at least going forward, I'm gonna do what I can to show like, hey, I may be a dick, 
but I'm not always. <laughs> so like you know, follow that you know, follow that example. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that sounds good, and I also want to mention for anyone watching this, and is in Europe. There is actually is a arm like European Arms Discord, and there are weeklies for the European uh, Arms ter- scene. They have been doing it for like two or three weekends in a row now. Uh, so it's it's small, but uh, it's something that we ha- kind of have to cherish, and we have to kind of get the word out there. Hopefully, we yeah. can get the, that Discord posted on Reddit and things like that as well. Uh, but yeah, like, great, like, uh, all of you had really great things about to say on that point. Uh, but we're going to move on to the kind of last topic of the evening, which is more, uh, again, a re- reoccurring topic. Because we have been talking about Evo Japan, I think, for t- uh, two yeah. topics. But this is going to be a smaller one. And uh, what I wanted to talk about with Evo right now is that um, since we don't have, like, those kind of uh, big offline tournaments in America, there are some. A uh, few in between there, um, the the one that everyone is kind of like seeing, like the end of the tunnel. It's like Evo yeah. Japan, like that's gonna be like the huge <clears> thing. <throat> and and I was kind of wondering your opinion of like, um, is that necessarily like a good thing? And uh, what I'm saying there is that like, um, I feel in some regards that uh, when s- looking at Evo Japan, we're kind of putting a lot of kind of hype around it, so we're kind of yeah. forgetting everything else. Where it's just like, oh, when wh- like what is going to happen after Evo Japan? Like, is there going to yeah. be anything after? Like, if, what if they don't announce Evo, uh, like Arms Evo in America? Like, yeah. are we screwed? Like, or like, yeah. uh, so I was wondering about your um, opinions on that, and maybe Rich Mister, you can like uh, kind of begin on that if you will. Yeah, so I think um, kind of going with what you just said then as well, I think it's a very dangerous um, attitude to have to put so much emphasis on one event because if Evo Japan comes around and it sucks, yeah. <laughs> like people don't turn up and it's not really a good um, thing for arms, mm. then like you said, if everyone's focusing on that as the, the end game, yeah. then it's going to be really, really bad for the community. So I think we need to look at Evo Japan as a big event Definitely train hard for that, send the best players and everything like that as well. But also kind of focus on what, like the community in general as well, and making sure that there is something there after uh, Evo Japan. Because I think after that, it's like the US Evo as well. And what mm. if ARMS is not in the listing? Does that mean that ARMS is dead and everyone packs up and goes home? Mm. Uh, I think there should still be a community there as well, because I think the majority of players um, who play ARMS at the moment as well, uh, myself included, don't get to travel to events like yeah. that. I, I love watching Evo. Yeah. Uh, I watch it, watch it every year, uh, the US one. Uh, but I think we need to still provide for those that kind of maybe can't go to the big uh, events as well and maybe not have that as the big uh, key focus mm. as well. But I guess that's easy for me saying because it's not. I'm not esports, so it's not my job to kind of to, to focus on these things as well. Some people are relying on these kind of events financially. Mm. Uh, so that's something important to keep in mind as well. But yeah, I think we need to see the bigger picture and not be so focused on uh, Evo Japan. It's nice, but we need a bit more afterwards as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe, do you have anything to follow up on that, Diatonic? Maybe? Yeah, I was going to say, in some ways I agree, but I think there are a couple of things I would argue are important about Evo Japan. I guess I could add this, tack this on to the what do I think is missing. It's not necessarily... I think something that ARMS needs is consistency in, in yeah. rule yeah. sets. Because mm-hmm. Smash, and to be fair, Smash has been around for years, a lot longer than ARMS. So yeah. you can pick up yeah. Smash 5 and you're going to know what stages are legal and what stages aren't. <laughs> but, um we need kind of because the the customs versus defaults argument has it's not dead but it's kind of yeah. really toned down a lot yeah. but i think the biggest thing for me and not just the tournament i think and i guess this is a to so i guess this is why i saw this yeah. but yeah. i see evo japan as a way to kind of get everybody on the same page in terms of rules yeah, so if evo japan is like all customs like these stages are banned these stages are counterpicks these stages are, are starters mm. and it works really well 
then yeah. everybody's going to start doing that. And now all these online tournaments have a great advantage in that it's a good way to train for a real tournament because mm, yeah. all the real tournaments are going to run those rules. Yeah. On the other hand, if they do something and it doesn't work, then people are probably going to try to avoid it. Yeah. So I'm hyped up for Evo Japan. Obviously, it's Evo. So mm. we, like that name means something to fighting yeah. games. Yeah. So it's, it's a big deal. So I agree. I think we do need to kind of think of – what do we follow Evo Japan with? Mm. Yeah, but I think that there are a lot of things that are going to come out of it. Not just hey, look at all these arms players all in one place. I think it's yeah. Hey, now we see what stages really are janky mm. and what rules work and what rules don't. So that's why I'm putting so much emphasis on it. But I do agree. I think that we need to kind of ask ourselves, what do we do after that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and f- and finally, Jorpen, uh, about this. Man, I want to go. <laughs> no, uh, I do want to go. But yeah. in all seriousness, I I do think, I think there, yeah, like both, like we've seen both sides just immediately in the argument. I think there are merits to both. I, mm. I'm kind of more on the side of, uh, if you, we can't, we don't want to put so much emphasis into one tourney because, like you said, what if it flops? Yeah. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> But at the same time, I I do agree that like the standardized rule set, rule set will probably help out people a lot because as as yeah. we all know, if, as of us who have been in discords and such talking about this, the customs versus default argument will never end. Yeah. There is no yeah. no one there. There is no one who's like just like yeah. There there we could have both. There's always just like the side of like all right, yeah. like you think you like you default. That's not the way the game was meant to play. You book you yeah. would hate you, yeah. and then you got the people like <laughs> you got the people who are uh, you know who were defaults only like. Well, customs make certain characters broken. It makes the you sure you have more characters, but everyone's going to use the same arms. It's so yeah. dumb. Yeah. It's going to yeah. make the game more and more stale. Like there, I think there are merits to everyone's arguments. It's just we all need to like chill out a little, <laughs> you know. It's just, and I just I want to see. I in general I want to see more tournaments so that a little yeah. bit of the focus is away from Japan, even though it's big. Yeah. Big. I want it to be big, hmm. but I want it to be like I I. I don't want everyone to be looking like, oh, Japan's going to save us, hmm. and then it flops, and it's like, yeah, well, hmm. pack it up, boys, let's go home. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it's it's a fair point all, all across the board, and uh, I I'm kind of one thing that I'm hoping for with uh, especially with Evo Japan or like any other tournaments coming uh, uh, besides it, it's that we get these kind of uh, I don't know how to like what the naming for this, but kind of like a hero, like the kind of how in the beginning of the kind of um, when the tournaments were on. We got Sol that kind of came out of this yes, tournament, and where yeah. everyone was like, "Holy shit!" And then before that, we had Zerg, who was or yeah, Zerk, uh, who was like mm-hmm. uh, the hero from E3, and it was like, "Whoa!" And then they're coming for the next tournament, and now I kind of like feel because Zerk was not necessarily like a competitive player. Like, uh, of course, he did win that tournament, but you know, uh, it was like no, it was new for everyone. And Sol, who has been kind of maybe inactive as of late. Uh, it's yeah. I, I'm really kind of hoping to see, especially since Tenten and Seoul is going to Japan for Evo, that maybe they can like kick up the like the dust and like bring back that kind of hype that comes with a player, and maybe actually seeing like players like Ku or Omega Pen actually yeah. live in person and being like mm-hmm. like you can because that's one of the things that I really love about Evo Japan where they just like they put these two dudes um, usually like on the stage and then you can just like watch them and see their interactions like that's yeah where like that's and that's what came out of the smash brothers documentary you could actually see the people uh and it's also something i really want to do with this cast so thank yeah. you again thank you all for being here on the show but uh, yep. um it, it's all like um good points but i hope that there is much else as well after evo um yeah. I also now uh, I wanted to make like this announcement that I told you about uh, like before the cast and but for everyone watching is that uh, like we've been talking a lot about tournaments and I recently got in contact by a tournament organizer that wants to do a really big arms tournament that's online in December uh, like more of those kind of details will come out soon but I'm just gonna say that they had a price pool of uh, $500 in Splatoon before this and now they said they wanted to branch out to ARMS and they contacted nice. me and uh, fellows in ARMS and hopefully we can make it into a good thing uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know how much more I can say about that now but uh, hopefully we can also kind of uh, get to more of a conclusion of how we're gonna do, do with the lag 
uh, issues as well. Yeah, because yeah. Then, uh, then as you said, Diatonic, if there's going to be money involved, shit's going to hit the fan. Uh, yeah, it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's uh, that's happening, guys. And also, yeah. I, I this is just kind of for a personal one. Like, if if you're in Sweden, there's going to be a big arms tournament in February. I just wanted to say that. Just contact me. I'm I'm going to hook you up. Uh, and uh, now for the last part, we're just going to do the shout outs for. Um, the cast because we're like at the end now and we're just gonna do the last parts here so maybe uh rich mister you can kind of um like tell something that people should do like maybe check out your thing on tuesdays like just just give give us the rundown of what you're about so people can find you yeah so um with the arms punch club if you haven't done so already please go to our website armspunchclub.co.uk or follow us on twitter at armspunchclub there as well. We also have a, um, a YouTube channel as well. We're uploading the um, highlights from the recorded lobbies as well. So if you type Hams Punch Club in YouTube, you can find us there as well. Uh, we also have our Discord as well, which you can find the uh, link to that in our Twitter page. So come say hi in our Discord as well. We're friendly. We'll look after you. <laughs> so come and like, join us in there as well. And just um, shout out wise as well. That's really want to give a shout out to the community that we have there as well. And even all our partners as well, like you guys over at, um, at the Fellows in Arms as well. You guys have kind of sometimes pop into our Discord as well for a quick chat. Yeah. And it's just really nice to be a part of that kind of our community as well, but the extended one mm. uh, as well. as. And I think that's something important that we need to do going forward as well is have this communication between different uh groups of arms because mm. we're all a bit separated at the moment but if we could get together and form one big group um that'd be pretty amazing i think as well so yeah shout out to everybody in the arms punch club i don't want to list you all by name because i will miss somebody out and you'll um cuss me out in the chat yeah. but you know you guys are awesome so yeah keep coming to the chat and keep um, contributing as well okay thank you and uh maybe we can move on to jorpen and your shout outs well, hey, uh, I stream. I make jokes for a living. Yeah. It's all right, I guess. Uh, <laughs> if you want, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jorpin. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter as well, Jorpin underscore. Uh, I, I post a lot on Twitter and just both on stream a lot on Twitch, just various things. Uh, the next week, hopefully, we've gotten the release window for Lola and the 3.0 patch. It's 11th to 20th. Mm. I'll be diving back into arms, like, very much so when that comes out, depending on what's in it. As long as there are more ranks, I'll be happy. If there aren't, mm, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I need something to do, man. Um, <laughs> other than that, I kind of want to shout out everybody at Breakthrough. Uh, we're, we haven't started off everything. we got a couple of initial people, but everyone there is cool. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Mm. And just, you know, everyone who's watched, not only me, but this and everyone here in general, thank you all so much for supporting us. We're trying our best to give you good ARMS content. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes... It doesn't work out, but sometimes, like this time, it's really good. So thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, we can move on to Diatonic. Uh, yeah, also first, shout out to Fellows in Arms and Defer for having us on today. It's been great. Um, if you have that graphic, you can pull it up. If not, no worries. I'm going to post it at, at ah. the UIA Discord. Um, so my first shout out promo totally shameless self-promotion uh the next up in arms monthly is october 29th and i swear this is the last of the jojo memes i promise you <laughs> there's no more jojo tournament things coming up i'm done uh, all right um, i'm out after this then <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i expected people to say that but um it is on the 29th of october which is a sunday i know that um life gets in the way sometimes so i'm really trying to push it in there mm. um so for our EU worldwide friends, I'm going to make some adjustments to timing and things like that. I'll have more details later. Hmm. If you want to know more of those details, um, check out our Discord. The link is some weird Discord URL. So the easiest way to do it is to go through our Twitter, which is uh, UIA official. Um, if you go to our profile over in the little description thing, there's a link to the Discord. But that's where you'll be able to see all the upcoming tournaments and everything related to UIA. Hmm. Um there's some other things that I'm working on down the pipeline, so be sure to go head on over there and jump in the general chat and just say hi. And I'm around all the time because I'm a big nerd with no life and usually have <laughs> access to electronics. So I'll be on there pretty frequently. So other than that, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh, and as for me, uh, if you want to keep if you want to keep seeing Fellows in Arms uh, as a podcast, uh, you should follow this channel. Uh, 
And uh, I, I'm, of course, I'm gonna give the shout out to now the team fellows in arms, which have been like helping me so much this last two weeks, where we've been getting up everything up and running. Uh, hopefully, we can like represent uh, us in more tournaments. But uh, uh, other than me, you can also follow Akiosho's channel, uh, who is also streaming arms, is getting everything started there. Uh, all the vods of fellows in arms will be up on my YouTube channel, which if you scroll down on Twitch, it, there's the button. But otherwise, you'll probably see this on YouTube, so never mind. Uh, we also have a Discord, uh, which is gonna, which has been growing as as any all of yours has been as well. Uh, other than that, I'm just uh, I'm just happy that we got to have this. I just yeah. realized while you were all doing the shoutouts that we were forgot to talk about button mapping. But uh, oh, that's, yes. <laughs> that's uh, oh, yeah. uh, and it, it's unfortunate, but it's something that we're gonna have to talk about in uh, upcoming episodes instead when yeah. people have actually had time to figure things out and see if there actually was anything interesting to change. So if you want yeah. to, you can have a look forward to that. And as an yeah. announcement uh, for that, where the next uh, Fellows in Arms is gonna focus more on like the offline communities where we're gonna have both uh, Hanukkah and Pineapple joining the cast. Nice. Uh, uh, now I'm forgetting who the last person was, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna figure that out. And uh, the announcements, uh, announcements is gonna be on Fellows in Arms on Twitter. Uh, you can follow that and stop following me. We now have an official account. Uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, uh, please don't follow me. Uh, I need those likes. Uh, uh, but <laughs> other than that, uh, that's going to be it for the cast today. So thank you, everyone here, for being on the cast. And, uh, thanks for having thanks, us. Yeah, and yes. thanks for everyone watching this. I think I guess we can just do like... I, I really like to do like a screen cap of everyone waving because I get to put that up on Twitter. So if you just can say bye and wave at the people, we can do that. And we'll see you guys next time. So see ya. Bye.